Hi folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. You know all the things to do. You might be looking at this screen and asking yourself, Self, why is Mr. Mega Man Fan showing me Jailbreak 6.7 firmware on the Analog NT Mini Noir? Well, to do what I'm about to attempt to do, I wanted to make sure I had all of the latest cores from the latest firmware version available if you want to jailbreak your NT Mini Noir, because one of those cores is for Sega Genesis and that is how this project came to be. You see, I have a friend who is a little bit on the shy side. He didn't want me to use his real name in this video, so for the purpose of what I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to refer to him as Tom. Tom had the same problem with his NT Mini Noir that I did when he was playing Sega Genesis games on the jailbreak. There is no third button on the NES controller. If you want to use A, B, and C, you have to use the select button for your third button, which is really awkward in practice. I'm going to illustrate just how awkward by going to Streets of Rage 3. If you've played this game before, you already know why this is going to be a problem because you need one button to jump, one for your attack, and one for your special move. And because of the way the core works on this jailbreak, the select button is your jump move, and that just really reeks when you're trying to do combat one-on-one -on -one with all the fighters that are coming at you. Honestly, it's going to stink in any kind of side-scrolling belt action game like Streets of Rage, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, you take your pick, but when it's designed for a Sega Genesis, they really do use all of those buttons, and sometimes even six buttons, but that's a whole nother kettle of fish. The point is, when you have to hit select to jump, it kind of ruins the immersion. You can't really get into the game, and that's not the fault of the core. It was designed with the limitations of the controller that was bundled with the NT Mini Noir in mind, so they had to put the third button somewhere. But it's not a good place to use it, and Tom agrees with me on this. So he, of his own accord, came up with a solution. Quite an innovative solution, I must say. Now I've got some good news for you. You don't need everything that Tom sent me in this box. All you need is the 8-bit dough retro receiver and the custom firmware for it that he's put on GitHub, and I've linked to that in the description of this video. He sent me all of this and asked only that I do a video about his custom firmware and in return I could keep everything in the box. With an offer that generous, how could I possibly say no? Here's the key component, the 8 retro receiver and he has already put the custom firmware on it so I'm good to go. But he also included this Super Nintendo to Nintendo Entertainment System controller adapter if I wanted to try this with a Super Nintendo 8-bit dough controller as well. And I told him I would provide one of my own for that. He didn't need to send that to me. So, let's get down to the brass tacks here. What is this custom firmware on the retro receiver going to do? Well, quite simply, it's going to give you that third button. And not only is it going to do that, the retro receiver can pair with more than the controller, the NES style controller that he sent me. It can pair with a majority of Bluetooth controllers out there. Tom has extensively tested his Genesis workaround and he's keeping a list that I assume will be on the GitHub of all the different Bluetooth controllers he successfully paired this with and played the Genesis core. But I believe that list includes all of the garden variety stuff you would expect, like a PS5 DualSense controller, an Xbox One controller, a Switch Pro controller, any of that modern stuff. If I'm wrong, he'll send me a message and correct me, and I'll add a pin note to the comments. But I might do that anyway. If he has a comprehensive list he wants added to the video, I'll just add that as a pin comment to the description of all the different controllers he's tested this with. And now you want to see it in action, don't you? Well, so do I. So he said that this retro receiver was already paired to the NES controller that he put into this box. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up and let's try it out and see how it works. I almost feel like I need to state this again, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. You don't need to customize an 8-bit dough controller. 
You don't need to update the firmware to any controller. You only need to update the receiver. That's it. If you do his GitHub firmware and update your retro receiver, you can use any controller you like. I'm just using the 8-bit Dell NES controller he included and already had paired with the receiver. But now, no longer is my jump button mapped to select. It's now mapped to one of the four NES style buttons that is on the controller itself. I will hold it up so you can see what I'm doing and you can tell that I'm not pressing select now to do the jump. I'm using the regular face buttons and not the menu buttons. Now he did say in his email to me, Tom told me the downside of using this controller other than the one that comes bundled with the NT Mini Noir is that there's no menu button. But if you already have menu mapped to down and select, say for example, not having the menu button is not really a problem because that's all the menu button did anyway was mimic whatever key press you had selected to get back to the analog NT Mini Noir menu. So you're not really losing that much, just one shortcut button. To really put his custom firmware for the receiver to the test, I decided to try it in a few of my other favorite Genesis games using the core on the NT Mini Noir. This is Rocket Knight Adventures, which has been in the news recently because a Rocket Knight collection is being released for PS5, PS4, Switch, you name it, through limited run games. And if you've never played Sparks or Rocket Knight Adventures and you don't want to pay the high prices for an original copy of those games on Genesis or Super Nintendo, then maybe you want to pick up that collection. I'm not telling you to do it or not do it. I'm just saying it might be an affordable option compared to an original copy because those have gotten quite expensive. But this is a super fun game. I've been a fan of Rocket Knight Adventures for a very, very long time, and I highly recommend playing it any way you can, any way you want to. Emulation, original, Carbon Engine on PS5 when it comes out, on Limited Run, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I just think you should play this game because it's really cute, it's really fun, it's great platforming action. It should be considered with the likes of Sonic and Mario, but it has never gotten that much of a mainstream broad appeal. But among gamers, it's certainly well known as being a great series, which is why the prices have also become rather exorbitant. High praise, low print run, you know how that kind of thing works. I also chose to test it with Toe Jam and Earl because again, it's a favorite of mine going way, way back. My friend Chris and I used to be roommates and shared a Sega Genesis and we played this game until we beat this game beginning to end in the fully randomized mode, I might add, where any map could have the rocket ship pieces you needed anywhere, not a fixed map where we knew the route each time. So we challenged ourselves and we beat this game and we had a lot of fun doing it. And we even did it again in emulation on Nintendo Wii many years later, but Having discrete buttons for all the things you do in that game is kind of critical. And last but not least, since Tom included it in the box, I'm trying the SNES to NES controller adapter, and I have to say using a Super Nintendo controller to play Rocket Knight Adventures is pretty nice. If you don't like the squared off hard edges of an original NES controller or the 8-bit dough imitation of that, then maybe you'd enjoy the rounded curves of the Super Nintendo 8-bit Doe controller or your favorite wireless SNES controller or even one with a really long extension cord on it. I don't care how you do it as long as it's got that SNES plug on the end. You can use your NES to SNES adapter with the Analog NT Mini Noir and plug any Super Nintendo controller you like into it I'm just using my 8-bit dough one with the adapter Tom provided, and it works just fine. Folks, I urge you, if you own the Analog NT Mini Noir and you have the jailbreak and you want to play Sega Genesis games, don't settle for using your select button as your third face button. Download his GitHub firmware, get yourself a retro receiver, install the firmware on it, and you have all the face buttons you want on your included 8-bit though NES controller or any secondary market one that you've bought. You'll be able to control it from the actual controller. Even if you think the buttons are mapped 
to A and B on all four buttons with the custom firmware, that's no longer a problem. And with a Bluetooth controller, that's not gonna be a problem if you use anything like an Xbox One controller or whatever ones he's got on his compatibility list. I'll put that list somewhere, either in the video description or in a pinned comment. But Tom, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to try your custom firmware, and I hope a lot of other people will try it as well.